Happy holidays, everybody. Welcome to the Klaus and Q show here live on ONTV. I'm Jason Klaus being joined by Quad L. Edwards. We're here, pal. It's the holiday season, full blown. The end of the year is here. Happy holidays, my friend. Happy holidays, you and everyone, the staff here. I'm excited because this is a very uh, exciting time of year for a lot of people. But then it also can be, you know, you could be in your feelings because a lot of things happened this year. So we're going to talk about it. We are. We are going to tackle both sides of the spectrum and everywhere in between here this week on the Klaus and Q show. And when you talk about the holidays, you are dealing with a number of different emotions, a potpourri, if you will. You know, there are people that they are in all of their glory. There are other ones that are, are, are coming into this time of year with a tremendous sense of dread. And like and I have made no bones about it. I've talked about it for weeks and weeks here on the show. It's here when, when we tackled the, the holidays, but also across um, our, our podcast network. It has been a reoccurring thing. And, and it's because it's on full display. You are seeing... The good, the bad, and the ugly, unfortunately. And while I don't know, Q, if it's as we get older, we 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 pay more attention to people who are not necessarily embracing the holiday season, or if it's just become a bigger problem. And we're going to get into that. We don't want to start the show off like that, obviously, but. You know, you are tuning in, you are engaged into the holiday season because by and large, at least for me, and I'm sure with you too, like there's a number of different meanings and what this season is all about, right? Absolutely. And I know it's it's different for everyone and I know they're taking it differently as well. But uh, it's the, the meaning is very, very important, whatever it is to you. I know uh, for me growing up as a Christian, it's been a, a spiritual meaning but you know as even as kids you know we have different meanings of uh, what Christmas is and the time that we spend with our families you know you're out of school a lot of us are out of work you know and uh, we get to enjoy each other and in, uh, in our presence and you know and then the presence come you know <laughs> under the tree right but uh, it's, it's it's so much that goes into it and I know uh, there's a lot of things that happen that might deter you from it but it's uh, it's all about that joy, you know, in your heart, you know, and I and I, I to be honest, I feel the joy, but there's a lot of people that that are dealing with uh, issues that might they might not feel that joy. Absolutely, you know, when you come into especially once you get past like Thanksgiving, you know, because that's for a lot of people that's that's their main event now, right? Nowadays. Right, and I often wondered why. Because I am somebody that anybody who's known me for any length of time knows it doesn't matter what my age is. In my mind, I'm still that 12 year old kid at, <laughs> at Christmas time. Like I embraced every possible aspect, all the all the all of the traditions, the cliches, yep. everything that was wrapped into the, the holiday season. You know, you talk about the holidays you got to talk about christmas obviously because that's the one that gets all the, the publicity of the mainstream attention but it, you know there's hanukkah there's kwanzaa there's all kinds of different things that people celebrate but no matter what it is that you celebrate at least for me and correct me if i'm wrong here i feel like the foundations of it revolve around the same thing it's about family it's about unity it is about appreciation for the good in your life and for helping out those less unfortunate, less you know you know what I'm saying right. like all kinds of charities and things of this nature, but on the opposite end of that spectrum, and like I was talking before we came on the air here tonight, like I was talking to a uh, Joe, our our director here, and like, we we see the absolute best in people. But you also see the worst in people too, and not. And we're going to tackle one aspect here in just a moment. But this is the time of year where uh, I got to watch. What I, <laughs> I got to remember, I'm not on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you see, uh, you see the real pieces of work come out of the woodwork to scam people. They they take advantage 
of this opportunity, oh, that yeah. goodwill toward, towards people for their own monetary gain or, or something of this nature. And we try not to spend a tremendous amount of time focusing on that because that's one of the aspects that people dread the most about coming into this part of the year. Um, but you talk about the ones who don't embrace the, the holidays and there's a few different reasons, really big ones, you know, and the first one we'll talk about briefly because we have mentioned this in previous episodes whenever we have discussed a holiday or things of this nature, especially if you're coming into your first one without a loved one. You know, every single year there is going to be somebody, you know somebody, you may be, you may fit into this umbrella of sorts, like right. you may be coming into your first Christmas season without a loved one to share it with. And look, I get it wholeheartedly. Um, that is a tremendous adjustment. But I have also maintained that, you know, our loved ones who had passed away wouldn't want us to be sad during the holidays. So exactly. instead of maybe mourning them, maybe find a way to celebrate them, incorporate their traditions that they instilled in your family or in your holiday pass that on i mean i don't know right. of a better way to honor their memory and to make them feel like they're still or make you feel like they're still very much a part of it even though they may not be sitting at the table with you right exactly and uh, i got uh, you know going back you know and my those who know me personally uh know that i lost my mom it was September the 26th, and it was, you know, getting on to that uh, winter season, you know, getting closer to that winter season when uh, we lost her. Uh, that very first Christmas, which was only, a, you know, a few short months after her passing, I mean, I don't, re now I don't truly remember that Christmas because I know I was prob probably down and try had to, adjust there was a lot going on around that time but it's i feel like the memories that i created with her or she created with me and um, the memories that i have now with my kids pretty much trumps what happened that year you know because one thing about you know losing that loved one you have to remember how they want wanted you to feel you know they want you to enjoy that time of year i mean there's there was no Christmas where my mom didn't try to give me the best or try to make me feel the happiest ever. She always wanted to see that smile on my face. So even in passing, like after she was gone, I'm, I'm quite sure that that mindset didn't change. I mean, that's, that's something that we have to carry on in our memories. And now that I have kids, I have to make sure I, can, I can't be sad in, during this period of time because now I have to pass on the happiness that she gave me to those ones that I'm taking care of now. Yeah, I I can specifically remember, like I can relate to what you're saying because I don't remember Christmas of 2020, you know, and th and right. that, that was that was the year we lost my brother. Like everything is kind of a blur in in that Christmas. Um, now the first one that we had uh, without my mom. That was in 2017. I, I vividly remember that one because, like I had made mention a little bit ago, she had her traditions, and like my dad, my brother, and I uh, worked. We 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 cooked dinner that that <laughs> year, and it was exactly the way she would have done it, and. That was me years and years, like watching what she did. Like my dad knew how yep. how how to do the ham and all this stuff. But it was it was that year that I really it was the first time I really implemented that that mindset, incorporating their traditions so that they were still very much a part of this thing. Because all I mean, yeah, selfishly, we want all of our loved ones to be with us for until the end of time reality tells us that is not possible and you know you just never know when that last holiday is going to be with with your loved one you know right. and, that, and that's why you know when we started talking i believe it was last month when we were talking about thanksgiving you know you 
you get members of the family over there that you may not see eye to eye on and it causes such such like a rift in in the family and when you break it down is it really worth um going through those motions or having that kind of negativity i guess for the lack right. of a better term because you don't know what's going to happen in the next 12 months you don't even know what's going to happen in the four weeks between the two holidays you exactly. know exactly okay yeah you guys don't get along or whatever you have an argument you have a disagreement that's human nature we're not always going to see eye to eye but i mean you got to sit there and really ask yourself is it worth um severing that that relationship in some cases yeah if there are if they're a toxic individual you don't want them around All right you know yeah, during the away. most <laughs> wonderful time of the year as as they call this but at the same time you got to look at things and be like man is is this the hill i want to die on is it really worth it because the last thing you want to do is go into that next holiday season or whatever with that sense of guilt right yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you have to remember that we have to we have to value people that are worth to valued, worth to be valued. You know, those, those family members. It, and it's 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 not always, um, and, it, and it's not always just family. You know, friends as well. But uh, there's people even in the family <laughs> that you probably shouldn't be around because everybody everybody in your family is not good. So if you think about it, but still to create arguments and to have all these different issues going on, you don't want that to overcome those good memories that you are supposed to be creating on this holiday season. So I always want to be surrounded by people who are uh, who are willing to enjoy and embrace the, uh, the, the true meaning of this holiday, you know, family, friends. We want to. You want to enjoy. You want to have a good time. You're off work. Mm -hmm. You don't want to feel like you're back at work. You right. know, <laughs> so many people going through all these different arguments and stuff, and it's not worth it to be honest. Because now you're you're doing nothing but raising your blood pressure. You got all this, all all these things going on. This this person's talking. That person's talking, and and you're just spinning in a circle. You're like, you don't know what to do. Right. So I, I, I hate being in those type of situations. So I always make sure that I'm surrounded by, uh, you know, the right family, you know, and, and I'm not trying to divide family, but sometimes- You know who's good and yeah, who's not. You, yeah. You and, know who, who brings uh -huh. what to the, to the proverbial table. Exactly. And, and, and I believe they know. Yeah. <laughs> they know that we're, we're, we're gonna go to this family gathering, we're gonna cause disruption. They know what they're doing. Right. So, I mean, just uh, always surround yourself with the people that you can have joy with, you can share joy with, you know. I don't, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna have that family member where I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna get him a gift because he's nuts. You know, you don't wanna have that type of atmosphere. You right. always wanna have an uplifting atmosphere, an encouraging atmosphere where we can have fun, you know, eat some good food together, watch football, basketball, or whatever the case may be, without arguing about it. And I mean, friendly debates is one thing, and argument is a whole different thing, so you gotta remember that. Okay, so here's, <laughs> here's, my, um, here's my course of action with that. It's real simple, real simple. Because here's the, th here's, here's the thing, <laughs> a lot of conflicts are simple issues that is blown way out of proportion. Yep. Okay, so allow me as one of my one of my many gifts to you on how to navigate through your holiday gathering this year. I got one piece of advice, and if you follow this piece of advice more often than not, you will find you will have a better overall atmosphere, mm -hmm. mood, and aura at your gathering within your dwelling. You ready for it? Ready for it? I'm ready. Ready? I'm ready. Don't talk about politics. <laughs> I like that, yeah. Do not talk about politics. They don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> politics is going to be, especially in this day and age, like if you want to talk about a division within our country, bring up politics. If you do not want to have a, a, if you want to reduce the possibility of real drama, don't even bring it up. 
because <laughs> at the end of the day, I mean, yeah, I'm not say, I'm not going to sit here and paint a picture like politics aren't important because they are, but they are not the end all be all. Okay, that is not what the gathering is about. That is not what the season is about. Okay, you can have your opinions and that's fine, but you don't have to bring it to the proverbial table. That's right. You can. You can table that for another time in another environment, around the dinner table, around the Christmas tree, around the whatever it is that you are celebrating is not the time to embark in that kind of conversation. Now, on the other side of that, let's talk about another issue that a lot of people have when they come into the holidays, and this is this is a bigger one, and this really ties into the, the, the first point of conversation, you know, what is the real meaning of the holiday? Um, people put so much stress on themselves right. to buy presents, to make sure that the kids, especially if there's kids involved, but even if you don't have kids and you're going to a family gathering, a family dinner or something like that, like people put so much pressure on themselves to make sure that they don't come empty handed. And you know, this is where they start neglecting the bills and right. things of this nature because they feel like that they cannot walk into a holiday gathering without having something to you know, to give to the kids or to other family members. Now, if you have a family of 15, that can see where, you know, that could be a a real big stressor yeah um you know i guess this is where the secret santa things come, come yeah. into play or something like you know draw a name or whatever but for those folks and look i never understood this i never understood a lot of the ill feelings that people went into the holidays until this year and we'll get into that after in the in the second half of the show um but I can tell you, without a shadow of a doubt, and, and like I understand how it is, and I'm sure you do too. Like in our minds, we want to get, we don't feel like we have to, we want to. Right. We right. want to show appreciation. We want to show people that how much they mean to me or how much they mean to us. And how do we do that at this time of year? Well, we buy gifts. I got news for you. You are the gift. You are the gift, not only for the season, but every single day, every single time you correspond with your loved ones. Mm -hmm. And people need to understand that that is enough. And I look, I get it wholeheartedly, I get it wholeheartedly, especially if you receive gifts. Like mm -hmm. there, in, it is in our nature that we want to reciprocate or to give too. Like, but. And there are some cases where that just is not possible. But that doesn't make anybody less than. It doesn't mean that people are, are going to be talking smack about you, because, right. you know, in the living room while you're getting a piece of pie. Oh, my God, did you see that <laughs> Barty didn't bring anything to the party? Come but, on, Barty. But Barney showed up. I don't <laughs> know Barney? why I use Barney. I just, <laughs> Barney, you know, Barney's there. You guys are sharing laughs. You're sharing that time together. That's the most important gift yep. of all time, Q. Tell me if I'm wrong here. You know what? I agree, and I got a, I got something to tag along with that one. Uh, I know for me, personally, I was never a big gift receiver. You know, and, and nowadays, I always think, like, okay, a person gives me a gift. Did this person have to wrestle on Black Friday just to get this gift for me? I'll be thinking about stuff like that. Like, what did they have to do to get this gift for me? Did, did they feel obligated? To be honest, if you kn really know the person, you will know that they're, if, if they're a big gift receiver. For me, I'm not a big gift receiver. Let me tell you what really means something. And uh, this is something as simple. This is something real simple. This is something that Jason Klaus does every day of the shift when we're at work. He'll come up to me. Out of his way, he'll come out of his way, pat me on the shoulder, and say, you're awesome. Stuff like that, you know? It's simple. It's something simple. It didn't cost him any money, you know? I hope it didn't. I don't think <laughs> so, no. <laughs> a, but, but stuff like that, you know, just going up to somebody and encouraging them and saying, you know, what's, how, how you doing? Yeah, How's your situation? How are you? 
You look good today. You know, stuff like that, you know, words of affirmation sometimes can be the biggest gift because, you know, you don't know what that person is going through that day. You know, they just might need a, a, a comforting word. That's a gift to me. I, I see that as a gift. You can gift wrap that all day to me. And, and, and it's really uh, because, you know, we, we, we all go through things and we all went through something. And each and every day we might go through something just to get to where we're at on that day, at that particular time. And sometimes a good word or a hug or a handshake or a dap or whatever, that stuff, should be, that stuff has meaning, you know, to different people. Now, if you are that, you know, materialistic type person, then maybe you're like, you sound crazy. <laughs> right, but then they're also telling you what kind of people that they are to their core, and yeah. by and large, those you you learn real quick. Like if if I encounter something like that, I realize at that point that is not somebody I'm going to be dedicating a whole hell of a lot of my time and effort into. Right, because right. Their fundamentals are completely, in my in my view, um, completely out of whack and they are a contributor to what I often call the deterioration of our society. Yes. Um, I didn't know that that meant anything to you, Q. When, <laughs> when, when they, I mean, not on, on that level. So as he just laid that out, like I'm over here bl blushing, you know, I'm like, <laughs> because I do. I, I make a point every day when, when we're at work to go down and just, you know, just to say hi, let them know that I think that he's awesome. But Q, like I can see him, you know, here's a sidebar <laughs> where my job is and where his job is. There is a considerable amount of space between us, but I can see him. I can see him all day long. Yeah. Like he's right down the line from me. Q puts out this aura, man. Like there is never a time where I look down the line and he's not smiling or he's there's not a spring in his step. He is one of the most positive people I have ever known in my life. Now, what I will do, in addition to making sure I say my, my daily hi to Q, <laughs> is I will kind of survey my surroundings. Now, there are people that I know how they are fundamentally. Like I just mentioned, I do not give them a whole lot of time unless I absolutely have to. But I will look for those people that I do like or that I do care about. If I think or if I feel like they need some something of... Mm -hmm some sort of positive affirmation like their aura is off like something just isn't isn't firing on all s cylinders i will make a point to go up to them and say something along the lines of you are doing a great job yep. or thanks thanks for being so awesome now i've kind of turned the awesome thing into a quote unquote gimmick but i mean it's not really a gimmick that's how i that's how i go about life i need people to know I need to remind people that no matter what they're going through, they bring something different to the table that nobody else does. Exactly. They are unique. They are special. They need to be reminded of that from, from time to time. Mm -hmm. And especially in this time of year, I mean, the goodwill towards your fellow man and helping out those less fortunate is on full display. But what I'm finding, especially in research, there's not a whole lot. There is a decline in contributions there is a decline in donations there is a decline in I mean across the board why because we are becoming every year just a little bit more more and more self-absorbed that and, and when you become self-absorbed and you're just worried about me 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 mm -hmm. you are essentially missing out on the entire meaning of the holiday season regardless of what holiday it is that you are celebrating. What's your opinion on that? I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I mean, I don't have too much to add to that because you pretty much laid it out. I mean, it's being, you know, just being kind to people, you know, goes so far. I mean, and for me, I know uh, going back to work, you know, uh, just, you know, use that as an example. I don't associate with everyone there either, you know. I don't associate with everyone, but you're not going to be on my team. And I call it, sorry, Brian, 
I always call it my team. Well, it kind of is. My ball. Yeah. yeah. L- like Survivor Series cold. All right. <laughs> now, I'm going to say this before, before I finish that point. I'm going to say this real quick. Somebody told me one time, he said, well, you're not at work. It seems like the whole atmosphere is different. Mm-hmm. And I say, oh, you know, that, that's, that's a compliment to me. So that made me feel good. So I always feel the need to, you know, just even if they're doing a crappy job, they're right. doing their terrible. You know, I'm not going to go up to you and say you're terrible, but I will go up to you and give you some type of encouragement or just to say, hey, what's up, man? I acknowledge that you're there. You know, I acknowledge that you're on your job today. You know, what's up? You all right? How you doing? And, you know, we got we got people that come in part time, you know. Some people are supposed to be full time that come in part time. You know, I, I, I haven't talked to them. You know, <laughs> I'll reach out to them and say, "How are how are, how are you? What, what's up, man? You good?" <laughs> I t- always I always made the conscious effort to speak and you know and just say, you know, what's up? How are you, how you doing? Because you know a lot of I said that to one guy, and he totally unloaded what was going on in his life he was a uh, and, and at the time I really didn't know the guy but he was telling me about relationship issues I mean I just met the guy and we were having a dr. Phil moment and I'm like wow well, obviously <laughs> you you resonated some sort of something trustworthy that he felt like he could confide in you right. or he was just looking for that first right. opportunity where somebody gave a crap about somebody other exactly. than himself. Yeah. Like, wow, this guy is interested. So this is my avenue to 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 get this all out. So now I do give a I do, I do give a lot of people my ear. Yeah. I do. I give a lot of people my ear. I'll listen. And uh I'll give my two cents. I give my t- I, I I see it as more than two cents, but I, I'll always give my opinion of uh, or or some type of helpful uh, criticism. You know, I, I'll I'll let you know. I'll talk to you. You know, I always talk to people at work. You know, whatever the case may be, whatever issue you're going through, and especially during this time, I've been a, I've been real talkative this past two weeks. I believe. Yeah, you have. Very animated. <laughs> yeah, I feel I feel like I've been talking a lot, <laughs> but uh. So, it, it's needed because we have the environment, especially I know a lot of people got these jobs and they have that environment of, uh, oh, man, I, I don't want to be here. There's so much going on in my life, but I'm stuck here at work. I should be at home. I'm tired, you know, and my legs hurt. There's so much going on, but we have to be able to change the atmosphere. How do you change it? One person at a time, you know, got to be able to encourage somebody. Right. I feel like that's important. Absolutely, and you know that goes around. That that is a gift that you are, that you will never be able to buy at, at a store. You know, when you have so, somebody's attention, when you have somebody's time, when you have somebody who cares, um, that's all of the qualities that really should be more on full display than all of this other stuff that gets more more often than not. Do, you know they dominate the headlines or your attention and you know on on the spectrum it is on the negative side of it and that's kind of what feeds into just this downward spiral that our society continues to, to head in but we can use the holiday season and like right after Christmas we have New Year's you yeah. you, you get that clean slate to start afresh so uh, what we're going to do right now, we are going to run a quick timeout, and when we come back here on the show, we are going to talk about our favorite, our personal f- favorite Christmas memories, what they mean to us, and kind of our own personal final thoughts for 2022. So stick around. More of the Klaus and Q show is right after this. Have you ever thought of producing your own podcast? ONTV offers the facilities, equipment, and training to help you get your own podcast off the ground. Learn how to record your show and get it out to the world. Cost is $25 per person, which gives you access to ONTV's podcast room and equipment. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. I don't know where that came from. I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) 
Welcome back to the Klaus and Q Show. Jesus and Klaus, Quandell Edwards. We're uh, we're in the mood here on, on, on this show this for this particular episode. We thank you so much for tuning in here. Um, look, we've we've tackled a lot of kind of the heavy parts of the holiday season in the in the first half hour here. We're going to kind of switch gears here uh, for the remainder of the show and focus on more more positive things, but make no no mistake about it very much heartfelt because i mean i know i've got some things i need to say um as we close out this year and i know you do too q but let's start off by you know when you look back on our personal holidays like i'm sure you have you know i mean we kind of touched on it here and there throughout the course of the show but you have your own personal favorite memories of christmas either as a kid or now, especially now that you are a parent, you know, Christmas is a big deal for your kids too, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, as you look back over the course of your lifetime, is there those those traditions, those specific memories that mean everything that, even in, in the midst of, you know, a lot of uh, moving parts, it could be, you know, things are crazy busy with your personal life, work life, that type of thing. Right. Um, there, there's got to be that one thing that oh it's christmas time and when i think about christmas time i think about this and it puts it in in, in perspective do you have those moments i'm sure yes <laughs> story time with you i love it uh, <laughs> <laughs> when i was younger um you know it was me my mom and my sister and we stayed in my grandmother's basement and i and i briefly brought it up um on the last show about the Christmas tree that we had, that we used to have all the lights tangled up. And uh, we used to put the Christmas tree up in the basement, uh, put all the little streamers and stuff on there. And the lights, we were never t we never took care of the lights. I don't know why. But uh, we tried to wrap the lights around the tree, and they would, they would be all tangled up. So you have a big clump of lights, like, sitting right there in the middle, and it's, like, breaking the branches off and everything. We had a ghetto tree. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> For me, I don't know why that stands out so much because it seemed like it has so much meaning behind it. And um, to the point where, you know, being in that basement, I would have a debate with myself. I mean, I was looking like Bray Wyatt for a little while. I was having a debate <laughs> about Santa Claus. And I'm like, how is Santa Claus going to bring the gifts to the basement? We don't even have a chimney upstairs. Right. So... I don't under I was I'm a, I was a logistical guy. I was like, this does not make sense. Is he gonna come through the heater? Like, <laughs> is he gonna come through the heat vent or something? <laughs> but this story, it always, always came up. You know, uh, I would just sit there in my bed and just rock and just think about how we're gonna get those gifts. And uh, this is before I knew about Black Friday and all that that right. other stuff. But. Uh, I would try to stay up and see, you know, if I can, like, catch them. <laughs> never Who did. Didn't? Never did. You know, <laughs> never did. You know, I I couldn't hang like I could hang today. You know, uh, I was always out. I could wake up and the gifts are under the tree. But uh, it's just that those, it's the little things to me, you know. It's, it's not about the big extravagant things. It's just the little things. My little Charlie Brown tree. Um, a little ghetto tree and uh, with the lights all clumped up and we used to have these bells that used to sing and we could they were all tangled up too we had a problem with tangled up stuff <laughs> <laughs> i noticed so we were so since the lights were pretty much clumped up on one side we got the bells <laughs> and put them on the other side therefore the tree don't tip over right <laughs> so uh those things really uh resonate the bells had 12 songs and i remember all 12 of those songs Needs to play on loop. How much is it, Q, that feeling, especially as as a kid, it's that feeling of magic, right? Because as, as you were laying that out, like I was sitting here th thinking about when we were kids, when my brother and I w were kids, it's like, yeah, we, we tried like hell to stay up all <laughs> night to catch the big guy. Like we would sit on the top stairs kind of looking down to, you know, to see the tree and stuff yeah. like that until... Like, like one of us usually was Jeff. Make no mistake about it, because I was very, very strategic. Jeff didn't care. 
<laughs> um, but he would make a noise, talk too loud, wake one of our parents up. They come out, get back to your room, you know. And then I'm like, yeah. oh, we're not gonna, you know, Santa ain't coming now because we've done blown our opportunity. <laughs> but we wake up that, you know, in the next morning and like, whoa, it's that feeling of magic, like that. right? As we become parents ourselves, we want to instill that into our kids as well. Um, and we've made tremendous strides in doing that. Like my kids have had amazing Christmases. I think back when my brother and I were kids, um, my, like my parents, and I've made no bones about this, two, the two hardest working people I have ever known. And they instilled in me what work ethic means. And um, looking back, I realized how hard that they worked for them to give my brother and I the Christmases that to this day at 46 years old, like I can vividly, re I could vividly recall the Christmas of 83. It was the Dukes of Hazard Christmas. Everything was <laughs> Dukes of Hazard, man. We had a pop-up tent, we had sleeping bags, we had the toys, the action figures, like everything was Dukes of Hazzard. Um, and that was before, you know, we really got into the wrestling thing. And I mean, once we got wrestling involved, every Christmas was all about wrestling. Right, right. Um, but I, I've told this story several times and it's one, one of my favorite stories to tell because at the time, like, I, I didn't think it would register the way that, that it did. It was just, I felt like I, I had a responsibility as Captain Christmas to instill Christmas spirit in people that didn't have it. And it just so happened on this particular year, uh, my target was my brother. And he was living on his own at this time. And he, he and I were talking and he made mention about uh, just kind of checking out of Christmas, he wasn't feeling it. He he didn't have a tree. He didn't have any any interest to have a tree. Didn't want anything to do with it, and it broke my heart because I remember what a big deal Christmas was for us as kids. I realize right. as we become older, and a lot of you have gone through this, it's not really about Christmas anymore. And this is why people really gather around Thanksgiving because right. it's more about that time with your family without the overall pressures of having to buy stuff like I get yeah. it. But still, I am that kid. I at 46 year old, I still have that that mentality of I want to enjoy the magic of the holidays. So what I did was in talking with my mom, uh, I believe this was 2015, if I'm not mistaken. Um, no, it was no, it was way it was way earlier than that. Anyway, regardless, I was talking to my mom and I had, we had were talking about Jeff and she had an extra tree, a bunch of extra lights and ornaments that she did not use on her tree and a spare key to his apartment. Knowing that he was <laughs> at work, <laughs> knowing that he was at work, I took all of the stuff, threw it in my car. I had like I kid you not, man, I had like a 90 minute window to get from Lapeer to Davison, br wow. allow myself into his apartment, <laughs> set the tree up, turned all the other lights off except for the for the Christmas tree lights, and then I left. I get a call like a half an hour later, and it's my brother, and it is like he says, "What did you do?" <laughs> <laughs> I, I walked into my apartment and all I saw was the glow from the living room. I thought my apartment was on fire. <laughs> I guess, you know, it scared the hell out of him. So <laughs> once he realized when he walked in and saw that it was the Christmas tree that, that he was seeing illuminated, um, who, who else would have done that? And uh, that's probably my favorite memory from, from the, the Christmas time because once he calmed down, you know, the one, the, <laughs> the one thing he said to me was, like, nobody's ever done anything th this cool for me. And that is what, for me, that's my go-to memory. When I'm yeah. feeling really down in the dumps, that's my go-to memory. And, like, I have thought about that several times this year, just in an effort to remind myself what it's truly all about. Um, 
got about a little less than 20 minutes left of the show here, and I know that my final thoughts could go on forever. So before I go into that, Q, I'm going to turn this all over to you. Um, you look back on, on 2022, you, my friend, have had an up and down year. Um, as you look back on, on this year and you, we kind of put a bow on 2022, what are your final thoughts of this year for you personally? Uh, you know, a lot of people who follow me know that, you know, we, we've been through quite the uh, chaotic, I was going to use that word, chaotic uh, 2022. But uh, even in the midst of all the chaos that might have happened, you know, uh, one thing that's really stuck out with me is the fact that it's me, it's my wife, it's my kids, and we are together. And I don't, I don't know why that, that's been sticking out like, like crazy that, that these are times that you can't take for granted because we had, you know, we had that fire and I was in that fire, you know, I was, I was asleep during that fire and I could have been, this could have been a whole different Christmas. This could have been a whole different episode. This could have been, everything would have been changed pretty much. The Klaus and Q show would have been no more. Uh, it's, it it would have been so much change just in the house, you know, with, with my wife and, and, and kids, you know, with me not being there. But the fact that we're all together and we're all safe has been like so big in my heart. And now that we're on to the holiday season, and, and, and this is kind of what I've been uh, dealing with when we got to uh, Thanksgiving, I pretty much said, let's just, let it just be us right now. You know, let us do stuff together. Let us eat together. We didn't go over the relative's house or anything like that. I said, let's enjoy each other. You know, I work all the time yeah. and I want to be able to enjoy my kids. I want to be able to enjoy my wife. We pretty much did the same thing for Halloween, you know. I know people don't really gather for Halloween, but I, we didn't go out and do a bunch of trick-or-treating stuff. We got together, we did the trunk or treat Actually, next door to the studio here, we did the trunk or treat and we went home and we stayed together. Everything has been together. We went, after, right after the fire, we went, we had uh, tickets to Cedar Point. We went together, it was just us. Because usually we always have tag-alongs. I mean, nothing wrong with the tag-alongs, but we always had like, you know, big gatherings, big family trips all of that stuff, but it's just been us. I said, we need to enjoy us. And I feel like this Christmas is gonna be no different, you know? And we really need to be able to, to, to value each other's presence, you know, because you don't know. We don't know, we, everybody that's watching went through 2020 unless you're, unless you're two years old. <laughs> everybody, everybody went through 2020. And we know the effects of things that can cause a rift in your entire family. We know how things can happen quick. 2020 was a catastrophic year and a chaotic year for everybody. We all lost somebody. And I feel like this is the time where we need to get our loved ones, hold them close, do things with them, and, uh, and enjoy each and every minute of it. And I know uh, <laughs> we actually had a, a trip planned. And, uh, and that's pretty much why I had those two days off at the end of the year. Uh, we actually planned to go to Florida, and I was going to take them to Disney World. I take my kids to uh, Florida every other year just, you know, just for a family trip. We can uh, enjoy and cre create moments. One thing about that, there's a story behind that. You know, uh, my mom... She always wanted to go to Disney and Universal. Uh, she always wanted to take us. Never got a chance to do that. So I do that with my kids. I do that often with my kids as much as I can. And uh, it's just those times together, really, that we need to really uh, value each other. And I, and I love it. Hopefully they love it too. And I feel like everyone out there need to really just grab hold to people that you love, Grab hold to people that you care about. Spend time with them. I know we all got a lot of work. Got a lot of work going on. I've been working overtime like crazy. I feel like I'm not home enough. But 
we have to spend time with each other because we're encouraging each other in that process. You know, we're creating memories. Just like we sat here for 30, 40 minutes talking about memories. Memories. Memories are precious. Right. They are so precious. But memories can also be <laughs> a hindrance because I can easily think, m memorize of everything that I went through this year and say, I quit, I give up, I throw in a, a towel, I don't want to see you, I don't want to see you, but I don't have to be like that. I can use these memories for positive effects and actually move forward in life, spend time with the people you love, and actually enjoy each other's company. No arguments, no talking about politics, none of that <laughs> stuff. I mean, we can always <laughs> enjoy each other if we are in the right mindset. <laughs> We're in the right mindset to do so. Enjoy your family, you know, be, because you didn't have to have them. <laughs> you can leave them today. We all have choices. If you choose to be with your family, be with your family. Leave all the other stuff, leave the garbage out, leave all that stuff out, you know, and just enjoy your family, you know. And uh, we had to push our Disney trip back to February. So we're, uh, we're still, I'll, I'll say we're still going. The fire pretty much put a little riff in our uh, plans, but I said we are still going. It's paid off. <laughs> it's, it's all paid off. I got the plane tickets and everything. I'm going to enjoy, I'm, we're going to enjoy each other. We're going to enjoy each other. And that's been my big thing for, you know, 20, 2022. Especially, well, really, 2020, 2021, and 2022. It's been like, you know, unity yeah. in, your, in the family. It's always been a big thing thing to me. You know, tw 2022 just kind of magnified it even more, you know, because we all thought that 2020 was over when uh, December 31st came, 2020. Mm -hmm. 2021 happened. People were still dying. People are still going through stuff. 2022 ain't no different. No. It ain't no different. All we did was take the mask off. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. But the stuff is still happening. So we have to enjoy each other. That's my thing. I'm going to shut up now. No, I mean, <laughs> you, I mean, I asked you, you had an open platform here. I'm like, put a bow on your year and you highlighted or you spotlighted, really, not highlighted. It was the spotlight. This is what's important to you. The overall theme here is unity. Yeah. And I totally get that and I can appreciate that. You know, you talk about the last three years, you, you know, it affected people differently. People yes. came out of it differently. Yep. Uh, we've had conversations in the studio off air about the pandemic had the opportunity to unite us. In some cases, it divided us even more. Yep. We're not going to go into that. That could be its own own topic for another time. But as I put my personal perspective on things and my retrospect and I put my bow on this year I'm going to go ahead and close my book I have my notes in it and I'm going to shoot straight from the hip don't worry Joe you don't have to have the finger over the button this will be PG I <laughs> <laughs> he's back there saying put your glasses back I, on I, what are you doing don't take the glasses off there's a promo coming <laughs> Uh, listen, this year has been nothing short of extraordinary for a number of reasons. Uh, I have documented a lot of it on very public platforms. I didn't have to. I chose to. Because for the first time in a long time, I realize that I regained control of my life. And I set goals, I set expectations in, in, in some regards. My responsibilities and obligations, as, especially as a parent, as a father, that is probably the only aspect of my life that did not get altered in this last year. Because so many things uh, took place in 2022. Now a lot it was, you know, self-induced. A lot was be was a direct reaction to my action. 
whether you agree with it or not is irrelevant because I quit caring about what everybody else thought. That was, that was probably my biggest takeaway is I regained some degree of control of my life. Now, I'm not, not trying to paint a picture to where my life was doom and gloom and there was no sense of happiness because that's not the case. So that, that would be a lie. But there were a lot of aspects in my life that just was not firing on all cylinders and I've come to the realization we've got one life to live here. I am afforded tremendous opportunities. I am afforded tremendous experiences and memories and moments with some amazing people. This man to my right is one of them. The guy sitting in the control room is another. I could sit here for hours and tell you about these amazing people in my life that have had my back without question, without hesitation. When, the, when others were so quick to hop off the what they perceived to be a sinking ship, and I wasn't sinking, I was merely changing my course of action. And yeah, my course of action took me down some pretty choppy waters at times, but at no point did I ever lose sight on the promised land, where my destination was, where I wanted to, to be, who I wanted to be. Now, anybody that embarks on any kind of actions like that, you're going to you're going to get some resistance. And man, I got a lot of it. And it would have been very easy for me, like you had said, Q, to just throw my hands up in here and say to hell with it. It's too hard. I can't do it. I don't want it. But I did. I did want it. And I was willing to do whatever I had to do to get to where I wanted to be. Not to any one specific physical location, or anything like that. It was inner peace. It was calm. It was, are you ready for this? Happiness. It was feeling like I meant something. I have a tremendous following on our, on our, on our podcast network here on ONTV. I have tremendous friends who have my back no matter what. And even though they may not have always agreed with my course of action, they never abandoned me. When other ones were real quick to put their arm around me in an act of solidarity or friendship, only to have a, a knife, a proverbially speaking, of course, in their hand and lunge it into my spine. Like I felt every cut. Well, I also healed from every cut, and every one was a learning experience. I am not the same man I am here and now that I was a year ago. I'm not the same guy I was six months ago. In fact, I wasn't the same guy four weeks ago because for the first time ever, I found myself wishing the holidays weren't happening. And anybody that knows me on a personal level knows what a, a damning statement that truly is because like I have mentioned earlier, I was all about Christmas. I embraced it. I looked forward to it. I did everything that I possibly could put myself so much in debt because I <laughs> I <laughs> felt like it was important to show my appreciation with gifts. Um, I think that's where a lot of my issues this year came, came into play because with everything that was going on and just my own personal circumstances, I found myself in, in a situation where I was not going to be able to provide the array of Christmas gifts that I that had been accustomed to my name, that had been associated with who I am. And I felt terribly about that. Like our teams at work, our coworkers, like that was kind of a thing. Every year I did something for our team at work. I can't do that this year. For the better part of two decades, I had a big Christmas party for a professional wrestling roster. I no longer have that professional wrestling promotion. Closed those doors this year. Ended a chapter of my life that, that was 28 years. Not a lot of people can say they put that much time and effort into anything. Um, like my, my kids are going to be the ones that benefit, you know, with presents, of course, because, I mean, how can I not, right? But I have also learned this year, I have been reintroduced this year to what not only the true meaning of the holiday spirit is, 
but what a happy and fulfilling life is. So all I can all I can do right now, I mean, number one is say thank you for those who tune in every month here on the Klaus and Q show on ON TV, or you tune in every week to one, if not all, of our podcasts on the PFC Podcast Network. And all I can do is give myself to you with the with the promise that every single day I will strive to be better than I was the day before. Now, there is one in particular that is at the center of all of this. And while I'm not in, I don't want to put anybody on the spot, like, <laughs> she knows who she is. She's the one that makes everything, she's the one that puts everything in perspective for, for me. And, like, I am the absolute happiest I've ever been, and she's a good reason why. <laughs> So even though I don't have physical gifts to give to my friends and to my family, I want you to know that you have me in any way I possibly can. Whether you need an ear to, to just listen, you need a hug, you need a handshake, you need a positive affirmation, or you just need somebody to be there for you in your darkest hour, I'm there. That's my gift. That's all I can give this year, and I hope that it's enough. If it's not, well, I tried. <laughs> but with that, I mean, I don't know what, you know, it is what it is. I, uh, but make no mistake about it, all jokes aside, I appreciate each and every one of you, and I want you to know that you are all, like, I value all as the gifts that you are t to me, and I hope you know that from the bottom of my heart, I try to be the gift to you in some way, shape, or form, whether it's in an en entertainment you know, realm or in real life or my very personal life. So thank you for everything that you do, sir. Thank you for your support and for, well, ultimately having my back. And with that, we will put a bow on 2022 and wish you all a very happy hol holiday season, happy new year, and we'll see you right back here next year. Next year. Next year. Wow. With Man. the with the Klaus and Q show here on Orion Neighborhood Television. Happy holidays. Let's light everybody. it up.